Recently, when I was preaching the retreat to the novices and the postulants, I referred to St. Thomas's question 188 in the Secunde Secunde, in which he deals with the different kinds of religious life. And I dealt specifically with Article 6, in which he asks whether a religious order that is devoted to the contemplative life is more excellent than one that is given to the active life. As we can expect from St. Thomas, he makes all his very important distinctions. But in the heart of the corpus of the, of the article, he states, we must say that the work of the active life is twofold. One proceeds from the fullness of contemplation, such as teaching and preaching. And he says that this work is more excellent than simple contemplation. For it is better, he says, to illuminate than merely to shine. So it is better to give to others the fruits of one's contemplation than merely to contemplate. In today's Gospel we read, No one lights a lamp to cover it with a bowl or to put it under a bed. No, he puts it on a lampstand so that people may see the light when they come in. This must always be the guiding principle of our Dominican study and institutes of the order dedicated to study. When we study, we do so not simply for ourselves, but in order to preach and to fill others with the light that they in their turn may go on their journey of faith and enlightenment. When we study, we also are aware that we ourselves are on a journey of faith. And our own study would also give us life and light. For as St. Paul warns us in the first letter to the Corinthians, I treat my body hard and make it obey me, for having been an announcer myself, I should not want to be disqualified. So brothers, neither as students or teachers or as a Dominican studium, we can never be inward-looking or self-congratulatory. We must never be smug in our attitude to study or how we organize studies. We must always see our commitment to study as one which prepares us for the mission of preaching and teaching. We must always see ourselves as being faithful to the 800-year vision of St. Dominic to be preachers of grace. We must remember that we are to be actively interested in the well-being of our brothers and sisters to whom we have been graced to be called to preach. I hope that over the years we have developed such an attitude in our Dublin-based Dominican Studium. It is wonderful that we have here, first of all, a Dominican community which prays and lives together in fraternal charity. Our study can never be seen in isolation from the other pillars of Dominican life, of prayer, community, and mission. And in this, I would like to thank the prior and priors and community who over the years have supported the mission of the studium. By example, to all of us who are involved in the work of the studium. Our community life is not an optional extra, but an integral part of what it means to be a Dominican studium. Hand in hand with the work of teaching is the mission to be a formation community. And this I wish to thank those who have worked with me over the years to develop an integrated approach to formation and study. Never seeing these as isolated issues, but rather in the forming of preachers for the mission, men of prayer and study, men of teaching and preaching, men of liturgy and private prayer. During the recent priestly ordinations of our eight brothers, Archbishop Rivas presented us with this beautiful carving of the hound with the burning torch in his mouth, reminding us that the light we are called to bring is to be burning. A light can be, at times, innocuous, 
an inoffensive light among other lights. But when it is a burning torch, it is different. It not only brings light, it also brings heat. And what it touches, it burns. And so it can be dangerous. Dangerous to allow the fire of the gospel to take deep roots in our hearts and in our words. I pray that our study and prayer, that our community and our mission may always be dangerous, awakening us from any false security or inertia. This is the light of study that I would like to see us involved with in the studium this academic year. A life that causes you and me to be burnt, to be alive with a fire that is alive, and that brings light and life, and deed that burns others when we preach the gospel, when we witness by our lives. I have been very impressed over the years by the evangelizing spirit of the students as they have brought their gifts and enthusiasm to the mission of this house, as it reaches out to carry the light of the gospel to our modern age, facing our modern questions. In many ways, it has been the students who have reminded us that as teachers and preachers, students and lecturers, we can never become inward-looking or self-obsessed, but that we are to be on fire with our Dominican vision and mission. The younger brethren, coming from the real questions of their generation, have challenged us all as Dominicans to be preachers. They have come to us burning and challenged us to be reformed in the heat of the gospel, which may have become too comfortable for us. We have may got used to sitting by a fireplace, but not having a burning torch in the mouth of some young an agile puppy. In our mission, in this house, a mission I believe we have not just for the Irish province, but for the whole of Ireland, we have been blessed with the presence of our brothers from Malta and Poland and Slovakia. We've been blessed with our brothers, our Benedictine brothers from Silverstream, and of our brother Franciscan from the Conventual Friars. Who knows what the future holds for the mission of this house to the wider Irish church as a center of academic and pastoral activity. On our staff, there are members from the province who give so willingly of their time and experience, as well as from various branches of the Dominican family, together with theologians, men and women, ordained and non, those with families, all imbued with the Dominican approach to study which is the desire to illuminate and to be illumined ourselves. To one and all, I thank you for what you have given to the mission and the vision of the studio. As I pass on the torch, I pray that this house and this studio will continue to be a place of light and life, a community that reaches out in faith, bringing the light of the gospel into the world of modern things, that we will continue to be a place that burns, burns with the love of God, burns with the hope of the gospel, burns with the challenge of the gospel.